In this video, we're going to talk about SDN, Software Defined Networking. What does it do for us? Well, to begin with, let's consider the traditional architecture of our network infrastructure devices like routers and switches. They all have a data plane, and the data plane is where we carry the data. The data plane is concerned with getting up packets or frames in one interface and forwarding them out the appropriate exit interface. And the way they make that decision is based on typically an algorithm running at the control plane. For example, a router is maybe using OSPF as its routing protocol, and the OSPF runs the Dijkstra algorithm. Well, that algorithm is running at the control plane or on a switch, we might be running the spanning tree protocol algorithm. This is where the number crunching goes on. This is where the decisions are made. This is what populates our MAC address table, our routing table. And then we have the management plane, and the management plane is how we as administrators connect to the devices for management purposes, maybe via telnet, maybe via secure shell as a couple of examples. And this traditional model is called a distributed control plane because the control planes are distributed in the different devices themselves. However, with SDN, we often see an SDN controller. And this SDN controller lets us consolidate all the control planes on the controller. The controller is running those algorithms. The controller is populating the tables within our devices. And this can take the load off of our end devices. And the controller is talking to these devices using an API, an application programming interface. And an API is just one piece of software talking to another piece of software. And we typically draw these devices below the controller. And just based on the way a compass works, if something is down, it's south of us. So these are called southbound interfaces, or SBIs for short. And this type of model, where the control plane is centralized within the SDN controller, this is called a centralized control plane. And the API that we're speaking down to those devices might be something like OpenFlow as an example. That's an open standard. It's part of the Open Daylight Project. And sitting north of the controller, we have applications. Now, these might be applications that we write. It might be applications that we get from another developer or modify to meet our specific needs, but the applications are going to communicate our intent about how we want the network to behave. We're going to communicate our intent with the application down to the SDN controller, and we're going to do that through an API. And since the applications are above or north of the SDN controller, we say that they use northbound interfaces, or NBIs for short. And the way the applications communicate with the SDN controller is using a REST API, or some people call them RESTful APIs, where R-E-S-T stands for Representational State Transfer. What we're talking about is really HTTP verbs, where we're saying that we want to put information or we want to get information, just like we would be talking to a web server. We could delete information, but these RESTful APIs use those HTTP verbs. And as we're sending the instructions down to the controller, we need to have those instructions formatted in a specific way. And later in this lesson, we'll talk about different ways of formatting data, but a really common way of formatting the data is using a format called JSON. That stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And by the way, Cisco doesn't necessarily do the centralized control plane. Oftentimes, Cisco devices will keep the distributed control plane model. Even though they can have an SDN controller, they still keep their control plane centralized. And speaking of Cisco SDN controllers, let's take a look at a couple of the more popular SDN controllers that Cisco has. First, we have the Cisco APIC. That stands for Application Policy Infrastructure Controller. This is typically found in a data center. It's part of Cisco's ACI, or application-centric infrastructure. Again, we typically see that in a data center, but what's in the enterprise? In the enterprise, we often have Cisco DNA Center, where DNA stands for Digital Network Architecture. And DNA Center can do several things for us. We can use it for design. We can literally have a map of the world, and we can have our different data centers and different enterprise networks on this map, and we can drill down, and we can see floor plans. So we can do a big design using a DNA center. We can also do provisioning. For example, if we're buying new equipment, we can have the configuration of that new equipment already configured within DNA center. And we can have the equipment sent to the destination office where it's gonna be installed. And somebody at that office, they simply plug it in 
and it's going to go out to a DNS server and it's going to download the IP address of a TFTP server and it can pull down its configuration. And of course, we can use the DNA Center interface to do configuration. We can set up policies, for example, quality of service policies, security policies. We can monitor what's going on on the network using DNA Center. And it's also got a fantastic troubleshooting interface. A lot of the troubleshooting issues we run into have already been seen by Cisco TAC, the Technical Assistance Center. And it's sort of like a TAC knowledge base that's contained within DNA Center. And if we have specific issues that are detected on the network, we're going to get TAC responses, solutions that TAC has previously identified. And also, there's a troubleshooting feature called network time travel, where we can uh, metaphorically go back in time and we can see the state of the network at some time in the past. So if we're doing troubleshooting and something bad happened at 3 a.m. last night, we can go back and check on network conditions at that time. But the main reason we're bringing it up in this SDN context is that DNA Center acts as a programming platform. In other words, it comes with a bunch of APIs, a bunch of those application programming interfaces that we can use to communicate our intent down to these end devices. And that's an overview of software-defined networking. Now in our next video, let's zoom in on that JSON formatting that's used to send our intent down to the SDN controller.